James is ready. I know he is. I'd like to uh, introduce our guests right here at WOMR. And uh, James has two guitars, and he's probably going to switch from one to the other while he's accompanying our, our friend here. Rose Clancy is here and uh, with her fiddle. Did you make this fiddle? I didn't make this fiddle, no. I've had this fiddle for a long time. Oh, yeah, I've had this fiddle for a long time. Um, I got it must be 15, 15 or 20 years. It's French, and I love it. Is that sort of like your personal best? Yeah, it's the one I go to all the time. Yeah. I can't get away from it. I have, that's the one you I... have one like that? Yeah, it's the one I got when I was nine. <laughs> yeah, isn't it funny? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, you get pretty, s you know, I mean... I, I, fr I picked up a friend of mine's uh, violin when I was in Rochester last week. And I went, why, this is beautiful. And it made me say, well, I need new strings and I need a new bridge. Right. But I, I really do love my violin. Yeah. But hers sounded like perfect. Yeah. You know, like sharp and you. clear and beautiful. Yeah. So everyone is different. Yeah, as long as you love the one you have. Yeah. That's the main thing. I but agree. Yeah. I want to thank you for having us here. Um, it's such a pleasure to be here and... Uh, I hope that uh, people will support the station, and uh, it's it's such a nice thing. I have to say, for me to have my CD played on the radio, I can't tell you how lovely that is. After all the effort I put into it, and you know, it's not something that uh, happens very often. So it's a really unique thing. W M O M R um, has the ability to play, you know, independent artists and local people. And I heard you talking about John Best before. And so, you know, it's, there's a real freedom in that, I think. And uh, I, I hope people will, uh, will choose to support the station and maintain that. I was just reading a blurb about the fact that we are not um, controlled by a larger corporation that's mm -hmm. telling us that you have to play this playlist now. You yeah, know? we'd all be hearing the same thing over and over again that we hear on all the other stations. So... It's really unique. Um, it's a great treasure to have here on, on Cape Cod. Well, I'm glad you like it. Yeah. Uh, and um, <coughs> yes, our, our number here is 800-921-9667. And you can call up, you know, you can interrupt if you want, or you can wait until after they stop um, playing or whatever. Uh, but we s still want you to call. We brought some CDs too to, to give away. How many would you have? I mean, oh, how many do you want? Oh, well, it's what, <laughs> it's what I, I noticed on CD Baby that there, you know, there weren't that many how albums. How about if we have like five or six? Would that work? Oh, gosh. If they, we have the possibility of you having a Rose Clancy CD um, with Brendan Dolan on uh, piano and John Evans on bass if you call up. Absolutely. Let's do it. And um, I, I believe to make it easier for our listeners who are being hesitant in calling, why don't we say uh, an individual membership, you can get a Rose Clancy CD. So let's see those phones ring. Don't let me down, people. That's 50, <laughs> a $50 individual <laughs> membership. And, um, That's great. And you will be in heaven. So why don't you... Uh, yeah, we'll play something. Play something that you both are, you know, whatever. Yeah. It's not the same as the CD, of course, because James Rice is not on that CD. Right. But they have worked a lot together, and they, and you published, uh, you produced a whole album, didn't you, for Rose and her dad? Yeah, actually, James was on uh, on the one that I did with my dad. Um, that was, uh, I think, two summers ago. And James played banjo, and he played bass, and he played guitar. He was like a one-man band. James James plays many instruments very, very well. And he sings great, and too. And he sings great, too. I hope we can get a song out of him, too. Yeah. Um, 
Well, I thought we would we maybe since you play a bunch of uh, you know kind of upbeat things, we'd slow it down a little bit and um, play this uh, this beautiful lament. It's called Neil Gow's Lament for the Death of His Second Wife, and it is on the CD. It's a beautiful tune from the 1700s, I believe. It's Scottish. Mm. Neil Gow was a what they called a dancy, and he traveled around the country teaching people how to dance. And he also wrote beautiful tunes. Okay. You let me know if this, is, this mic is good. Oh, wrong guitar, James. Wrong guitar. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. Ready? I love that. Thank you. That's Rose Clancy and James Rice. James on guitar and Rose on that fabulous fiddle of hers. Thank you. And, uh, mm -hmm. and the name of your album is Rose Clancy because it's your first, it's first Rose Clancy f CD. It Just is my first solo CD. Is that your phone, James? <laughs> that would be me. I I maybe I you were going to do a little whistling for us. <laughs> I, thought, I thought he was trying to get my attention. <laughs> I did too. <laughs> I was like, what's wrong? <laughs> uh, so Rose Clancy says, 
She's been on um, other CDs with her family and her father and her uncle. And yes. And yeah. the Clancy tradition. Yeah, my brother and my cousin. And uh, we've had music in the family for forever. And uh, we have a family band back home in New York consisting of my uncle plays accordion, my dad plays guitar and sings, and I have a cousin who sings, Leodin. My brother, John, plays bass, and then we have a non-family member, Mike Melanifee, who's a fantastic button row accordion player. So we grew up with that, and uh, it's been a great pleasure to have that in my life. And uh, So my parents were, were talking to me about, you know, you really should think about maybe doing doing a solo CD, and talked about it for a couple of years, and um, my friend Brendan, my dear friend Brendan Dolan, um, called me up and said, I'm going to come up and we're going to do it, and, uh, and we did, and uh, it's, been, it's been really fun. It's great, great making a CD with him. We're childhood friends. You know, our, our, my father and his father were uh, really best friends, and my father met his father, Felix, the second night he arrived in this country, and uh, so Brendan and I have been friends forever, and it was a great pleasure to make a CD with him. And, and also, I must say that John Evans on bass, um, fantastic, uh, just such an incredible musician. Um, so he added an awful lot. And it was a great, also, we recorded it at, at John's studio, at Brick Hill Studios, and uh, that was just a very relaxing process, I have to say. Uh, it was fantastic, so anyone who's thinking of doing a recording, uh, Brick Hill Studios was great. Relaxing. Very relaxing. I think that's about the best compliment that a... Well, I know. <laughs> it can be very <laughs> stressful. Could possibly get. Yeah. But uh, it was great, yeah. And we just went in there and just put the tracks down and... Uh, it was fun. Very, very lovely people, the Evans. Very, Evans's. very lovely people. And yeah. I, I've been in that studio. It's but nice, isn't it? I got to make sound sound effects. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I remember that. I can't tell you anymore. Yes, it's you a, did, top uh, secret. It's top <laughs> secret. <laughs> I was there. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And Larry and Daniel. Yes, yeah. All the fiddlers. Yeah. Oh, that was you and Larry and the other. Yeah. Uh, Violists and cellists. Cellists and, and the bass player. Yeah. Yeah. James, why don't you, uh, why don't we get James to sing a song? Would that be all right? Is that, can you get that microphone a little bit closer sure to you? I can. The, there you go. There you go. He's got that deep voice. It's so cool. There you go, James. He can do a lot with that voice. Yeah. You should hear me. You should hear me first thing in the morning. Funny the goofy things that will come out of your mouth on live radio. Yeah. yeah, it happens all the time. I, I know all about I'll tell, it. <laughs> I'll tell you, it sounds awesome in this room, though. All right, this is a, this is a tune by Tim O'Brien called... Oh, actually, it's not by Tim O'Brien, but he, uh, he was the first version I ever heard. And definitely inspired me. So it's Ola Bell Reed, but right. I'm gonna uh, say the name I'm again. Credit it's Ola Bell Reed. Ola Bell. Yep. It's pretty pretty darn old. Rose knows the history. Why don't you wax well, eloquently I, for a while? <laughs> I think she was uh, near 1920s or 1930s. Um, a prolific songwriter, Appalachian. Uh, she wrote tons of great songs, and uh, I used to know a little bit more about her, but um, you should check it out. Ola Bell Reed, great songwriter. She's not with us anymore. She was uh, a, a real local from down there. I mean, she just grew up down there, and this was who she was. This she, she did songs. So that's pretty cool. Ola Bell. Ola Bell Reed. And... You've played Irish your whole life, and uh, Rose has, but I know you have a knack for this American stuff, too, because I've heard you play it. You know, every once in a while I do it, <laughs> if I'm feeling it, you know? 
Oh, here, I have a note on Ola Bell Reed, 1916, and she passed away in 2002, and she was from Lansing, North Carolina. Mm. Songs of Appalachian Life. I'll, I'll try it's not to mess it stuff. up for you, James. Go ahead. Come now. seen the lightning flashing and I heard the thunder roar. I've endured, I've endured. How long must one endure? summer on through the fall too many mouths to feed could not clothe us all I went to church on Sunday to learn the golden rule I've endured I've endured how long was one I've sorrowed, been to success's door. I've endured, I've endured. How long must one And flashing, and I heard the thunder roar. I've endured, I've endured. How long was one endured? I've endured, I've endured. How long was one Beautiful guitar, <laughs> beautiful song. Thank you. Thank you, James Rice. No one calls you Jimmy anymore. Um, you you're still playing down all around. I am. Yeah, yeah. You're still at the, the O'Shea's and. I am. I yeah. am. Yep. Yeah, from time to time. Not Catch me there. Been back at the harvest? Not for a little while, but mm -hmm. uh, I anticipate being there. Yeah. yeah um, this weekend, you can catch me Friday night, 8 o'clock, a place called Tavern 731 in Yarmouth. Okay. And uh, Saturday at the new Red Nun in Dennisport. Okay. Congratulations. That's good. <coughs> and uh, Rose Clancy, your summer series of concerts, is, is it quieted down yet or...? 
Well, with, with your dad? And yeah, we, we, we finished doing that in October. And so every Tuesday night in the summer, my dad and I would... Well, you were there one night, actually. Yeah, yeah. You came up and played some tunes with us, which was fantastic. And uh, so every Tuesday night, we just have like a little informal concert. And we had such a great summer. We had so many people from all over the place would come. And every Tuesday night, it was like a little little party down at the Chatham Fiddle Company. How do they get in touch with you about that? You know, it, a lot of it just started kind of through word of mouth. And um, uh, there were people who... Uh, you know, had hotels or were hosting guests who knew about it and they would bring people to it. And uh, and then we had a lot of people who would come every week and just, you know, have a, have a good time. And we'd have people come up and uh, sing or do a poem or play a tune. And, you know, we had a little girl from Maine came down with her fiddle and she played some tunes. So it was really, it was a lot of fun. So when the crowds started dwindling in, in October, we decided uh, to stop doing it and uh, hold off until next spring. Mm -hmm. But the concert series that we do at the Chatham Fiddle Company um, is still going, you know, where we bring in artists. We have a great show coming on November 20th. We have the guys from Lunasa, two of the members of Lunasa coming. Hopefully we'll see you there. Killian Valley and uh, Kevin Crawford. And we also have an incredible um, singer and songwriter, Robbie O'Connell. So it's, uh, it's, it's probably one of the more unique pairings you'll see having Robbie O'Connell and the, the guys. Sa the same night. The same night, yes. All right. So uh, it'll, be, it'll be a great, great concert. There's a few seats, few seats left for it. It's almost sold out. Well, what's the phone number? It's it's actually uh, my phone number, which is nine one seven four one six zero one three nine, or you can also email me at roseclancyfiddler at gmail dot com. Rose has a wonderful series of concerts with uh, usually the um, the Irish kind of stay on the Celtic side. Yeah. We, we do kind of Scottish, you know, Cape Bretony, Irish. Yeah. Occasionally we stray. And, and Ro Rose is a luthier, and she, she makes violins, too. And you can find out more about her online uh, at roseclancy.com. It's uh, chathamfiddlecompany.com. Chathamfiddlecompany. Yeah. Chathamfiddlecompany.com. Stop. Stop by and check it out yeah. in person yeah. in Chatham. Well, but we'll go back to the, your album, which is so beautiful um, and so packed full of wonderful uh you know, multiple reels and and who, who's playing the flute on that? Well, actually, that is Brendan Dolan playing flute. He's a great flute player as well as pianist. Yeah, and he also plays uh, the whistle on uh, that tune, um, Betty Moffat, that our wonderful Cape Cod friend uh, Greg Johnson wrote. So grateful to him for that beautiful tune that he wrote for his mom. His mom was Betty Moffat. She was from Provincetown, I believe. Yes, Greg Johnson from Mashpee, not to be confused with our yes, the f other the guitarist other in Orleans. Greg Johnson is multi instrumentalist as well, and yes. he's great musician. A great, he has quite yeah, a few absolutely. fiddle tunes up his sleeve too. He does, indeed. So we we hardly have any time left. We you know it's seven forty eight, and the show's over at eight p.m. Yeah, and so. Um, what would you like to play for us now? Should we do uh, the looper? Or do you want to do the Probably one. If we could do one, we could probably do the loop, right? Yeah. Well, we had, we had uh, kind of rehearsed uh, a tune, and you were playing it as we... Oh, I'd love it. Well, w w we won't play it twice because you already played it. <laughs> no, no, but, they but we're, we're going to do, actually, we'll do a Liz Carroll tune now. It's, it's kind of a funky little tune called Lost in the Loop. And uh, it's a lot of fun. Okay. I'm partial to this one anyway. James likes this one. I like this one, too. Some people don't like it. It's, it's different. <laughs> Talking to my parents. <laughs> Here we go, ready? After two. One, two. Thank you. 
phone call. Yes. We'll just, we'll run the show for you. <laughs> um, well, yeah, okay. we're I know you. totally happy to be here. Should we <laughs> play another Dinah. one while we're waiting? Dinah's got a phone call. Yeah. I'll get, I'll get Rose to finish filling it out for you. <laughs> <laughs> you want to do a, a Billy Jenkins? Thank you very much. Thanks for, oh, thank she's you. <laughs> you get the CD. <laughs> All right, bye. Nice talking to you. Oh, it's my dad. Is my dad on the phone? <laughs> he, he, he just pledged $50. <laughs> Excellent. Thanks, Dad. You're awesome. But you're going to have to finish fill, filling out the pledge card for him. <laughs> I'll fill it out for him. That's no problem. <laughs> That's great. Fantastic. You can deliver it to him yourself. <laughs> oh, yeah. He wants a CD? <laughs> okay. We'll take care of that. No okay. Um, I love that piece. Now, was there more than one in that? Or is that no, just all? No, that's all one piece. Yeah? So it's a three-part mm -hmm. reel called Lost in the Loop, written by the great uh, fiddler Liz Carroll. So, uh, Have you ever met her? I have met her, and she's a delightful person. Where did you meet her? I met her in the Catskills a couple of times. Um, she was teaching there, and uh, and I think I've met her um, a couple of times at various just functions and things like that. Uh, at, she was actually, if you remember, we used to have the Cape Cod Celtic Festival years ago, and Liz Carroll was one of the featured artists at that festival. I think that was the first time I ever met her, and it was really thrilling to actually sit in a session and get to sit next to her and, and, and play tunes. Like, I've always admired her playing, so. Uh, uh, she, was, was she a big influence on you? I think, yeah, um, you know, towards, in the, in the last 10 years or so, I've, I've uh, really enjoyed her music. I mean, she's technically, she's really brilliant. And the fact that she writes most of her own tunes, I also find, um, is just amazing um, to be able to do both well. 
is rare, I think. Playing her own tunes. She's playing her own tunes, yeah. yeah. And she's, she's written hundreds of tunes. She's got a great tune book out, and, uh, and they're, you know, they're modern, they're modern tunes, um, but they're beautiful tunes. She's got some beautiful uh, airs and slow waltzes, too. We have enough time for one more. Okay. But um, if, if they want to find your CD, uh, they could go to cdbaby.com. CD Baby, and it's on iTunes now, and uh, pretty much all of the music services are, are carrying it now digitally, or you can also you can get a physical copy from uh, CD Baby. Or if you want, you can go on to the Chatham Fiddle Company's website and uh, just make an inquiry through the email and... I'll send you one. Yeah. Thank you. And uh, thanks so much for having us. We really had a good yeah, time thanks, up here. Yeah. It's been great. Um, great playing on both of you. And uh, thanks. Thank you. Oh, no, it's a it's a pleasure to have you here. Uh, the finest, finest in. Uh, thank, in uh, thank you. I would say it's you know. Uh, so many miles, there's miles and there's miles. There's lots of us around, lots of good fiddlers here on Cape Cod. It's so who, uh, did you start with any classical? I did. Yeah. Yeah. So I had this kind of dual thing going on as I was going along. And uh, in third grade, uh, we were, through the school system, you were allowed to pick an instrument. And I knew, I knew for years before I entered third grade that I wanted to play the violin. So in third grade, uh, I got a violin, and uh, I had a great teacher, Mr. Paul Ehrlich, and he, uh, I learned classical music um, at school, and then I also went on to take private lessons, uh, classical lessons. But the whole time, there was this you know, Irish music going on in my house, Irish traditional music going on, and I was exposed to it, and I was learning that at the same time I was playing classical. So. There was a point where we kind of hit the crossroads and we kind of had to make a decision <laughs> which way we were going to go with it. Um, I think I do think it's possible to do both, but um, sometimes if you want to get really serious about the classical music, I think it's it's, it's difficult to maintain. Like I, my playing has changed a lot since I stopped playing classical music, um, but I value that that classical training tremendously now really really grateful that I had it thank you for sharing that yeah we have like three minutes or less yeah so uh, I'd like to thank Rose Clancy and James Rice for being with me here at the Fiddle and the Harp on WOMR 92.1 FM and WFMR 91.3 FM 1-800-921-9667 if you're interested for $50 Pledge, which is an individual membership, you can get a Rose Clancy CD. She's donating them as a pledge, uh, a premium to our our pledge drive tonight. And uh, you're welcome to call. I'll be here for a little while. You could call up the station um, after the show, or you can call the station tomorrow. Or you could yeah. go on. You could go to the WOMR.org. Um, website and you can donate right there too. So here's an American tune then we'll go into a kind of a tune written by a Scottish piper. Mouth of the Tobique and then into Taybank shenanigans if we have time but you just fade us out if yeah. not, right? Yeah, it's going to be very short. Okay. <laughs>
Mr. Olson, are you taking the position that there is no difference in the First Amendment rights of an individual? A corporation, after all, is not endowed by its creator with inalienable rights. So is there any distinction that Congress could draw between corporations and natural human beings? What the Court has said in the First Amendment context, New York Times v. Sullivan, Grosjean v. Associated Press, and over and over again is that corporations are persons entitled to protection under the First Amendment. That was Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg questioning Theodore Olson in Citizens United.